Welcome to my video on the problems and solutions of walk forward optimizing. Please take time to read the disclaimer. My name is Peter Swag. I'm a full time system builder and trader. The TradeStation Walk Forward Optimizer was an awesome tool. The product, however, hasn't changed for years. And it nearly killed me living within all of its limitations. If you're in the software business and you haven't improved the product for years, you're likely to get overtaken. Personally, I feel TradeStation Walk Forward Optimizer badly needed some improvements. Fitness is what you tell the Walk Forward Optimizer to maximize. The most common fitness is net profit or net profit over drawdown or average trade, but there are numerous other fitnesses as well. The results of walk forward optimization and your system will vary enormously depending on what fitness you use. One fitness may work well for one type of system, but another system may require a different type of fitness. Today we're going to look at a fairly old S&P 500 system. The system is ideal in the fact that it's three and a half years out of sample. It has a high volume of trades and it's moderately complex. Here is the performance report. Place close attention to the $68.61 average trade figure. In this video we're going to talk often about the average trade figure and its inverse relationship of the number of trades. If number of trades is up, average trade is low. And if average trade is high, then the number of trades will be low. You need to get the correct balance between these two figures. But we're also sometimes going to use zero slippage in commission, and other times we're going to use 20 or $22.80 slippage in commission. So here the average trade is 68.61 plus the 22.80 slippage and commission figure gives you a 91.61 average trade if you had zero dollars slippage in commission. This is a great figure and it's a high figure for a day trading S&P system. One of the reasons it needs to be high is to overcome slippage in commission and because live performance often is lower than in sample performance. We have now done a walk forward optimization using fitness of net profit. Zero slippage in commission was used. The results gave net profit being way up, the number of trades are way up, and the average trade is nearly halved. It's gone from $91.61 down to $56.42. We are now doing a WFO with fitness of average trade. Profit per trade is great at $120.69, but profit has dived from the original $310,000 to $88,000. Note that the original system, if we had zero slippage in commission, was midway between at $213,000 net profit. The logical thing to do would be to use 50% net profit and 50% average trade. I desperately wanted this feature and I'm happy to say the writer of the work walk forward optimizer actually added it in for me many years ago. Using fitness 50% net profit and 50% average trade, the only improvement in average trade was less than $8. We need performance halfway between what we saw with fitness net profit and halfway between average trade. This at this stage seems very elusive. Meet the new enhanced trade made walk forward optimizer. There are a lot more great features here than what you can see. Note in the example how net profit and average trade have an equal weight of one. So that's the equivalent to 50% on the trade station walk forward optimizer. Note how the average trade increased from the trade station walk forward optimizer at 50% net profit and 50% average trade, it went from $64.25 to $90.81 average trade. The profit factor went from 1.78 to 
to 2.22. The drawdown decreased from 5525 to 3987. On the dark blue on the bottom line you can see the Pearson's correlation coefficient of the equity curve to a straight line at 0 0.994 which is an exceedingly good figure and the sharp ratio of 2.84. Well let's say you don't have the trade made enhanced walk forward optimizer. Can you shift the average trade up by using higher slippage and commission values when you optimize on TradeStation? The answer is a very definite yes, even though the example shown failed to succeed in doing this. We use $20 slippage and commission, but realistically a figure like $40 is what would have worked better. Every time you try a different slippage and commission figure, the whole strategy needs to be re-optimized on TradeStation. Hours of work for your CPU and time consuming for you. You then need to remove the inflated, if you've used an inflated slippage and commission value from your reports to see what your performance report would be like. It's all very time consuming. Regardless of this, it's good practice to use a realistic slippage and commission figure when you do optimization. In the example shown, using $20 slippage and commission while optimizing the system on TradeStation resulted in an increase of only $6.31 per trade. That figure is derived by the $62.73 less the average trade figure using fitness net profit of $56.42. In the previous example we used $20 slippage and commission but it didn't help raise the average trade much. If we used $40 slippage and commission we would have been much better off. This led to $90.81 average trade. That was derived by the $70.81 figure you see plus $20. Now this would have taken many hours to do on TradeStation because we had to re-optimize then we had to do the walk forward again. But now watch this happen live in front of your eyes. We are starting off with equal weight on net profit and average trade. We now want to add $20 slippage and commission. Rather than hours of work for you and your CPU, just click the button. Three seconds later it's done. Let's say we want to internally use a value of $50 slippage and commission for fitness but only $20 in the report. Click the button and it's done. Let's say we now want to change our slippage and commission to be $30. Click the button and it's done. If you wanted to use $50 slippage and commission internally in TradeStation Walk Forward Optimizer you'd have to do your optimization again then put the settings into TradeStation, then use $20 or whatever it is, slippage and commission. So a multi-stage process that's very time consuming for you and your computer. TradeStation is a 32-bit application. We're going to talk more on the significance of having only 32 bits a little bit later on. Normally, if the files are too big, the walk forward optimizer will crash or the graphs don't display, or some of the dates can be wrong when you look at the in-sample reports. But here we're going to show you something that's more subtle. These results look quite amazing. $389,000 profit, nearly $82 profit per trade. That's still with zero slippage and commission. But the results don't match what's in the TradeStation report when you apply the parameters. You can see the 240, 0 0.22, 24, 65, 110, 230. When those are applied back into TradeStation, the results don't remotely match. When you get this bug, however, you'll find that the number of trades, which you can see 4755 from the WFO up the top, and 4766 in the TradeStation report, the numbers are nearly always the same, but all the other metrics are completely wrong. Note that this problem occurred with only 3 gigabyte file and no error messages whatsoever. When this box is unticked, 
all the trades don't go into memory and it should be a workaround for this issue. Hence it's much slower because it's doing a lot more disk work. This didn't fix the problem at all. In fact the results are completely unchanged. Some of you might remember the IBM PC. When it was built, the designers had no idea where the concept was going to go. The architecture was hit by a problem with a limitation of 640 kilobytes of RAM. Nowadays your smartphone typically has 2000 times more RAM. Similar was the Y2K issues. Programmers never planned for dates to hit the year 2000. Just as users were plagued by the DOS RAM limitations and year 2000 date issues, walk forward optimizer users have also been hit by painful limitations as there was a lack of planning around the 64-bit issue. One of the criteria of a valid walk forward optimization is sufficient range around the parameters you started with. If you get this wrong, the whole walk forward process is invalidated. The only thing you can do as a compromise is to not optimize the less critical things like stops, profit targets or some other variables that don't really change in the whole walk forward process. Or you may have to do multiple walk forward optimizations and hone down the parameters. It's very time consuming and the results aren't as valid. The primary reason I built Enhanced Walk Forward Optimizer was the need to overcome the 64-bit issue and the need for better fitness functions. The product, however, ended up being much more than this. Now we have the addition of things like Profit Factor, Sharp Ratio, Pearson's Fitness, which is how close the strategy is to a straight line, the equity curve, and that's a very useful metric uh, because at the end of the day we want a system that performs profitably on a very consistent basis. And we've also got some propriety indicators. For example, you see there TM+. TM+, standing for Trade Made Proprietary Fitness, has just been made. Note that the in-sample curve is identical to the out-of-sample curve. This is a very unusual and somewhat spectacular function. The global financial crisis was very lucrative for many day trading systems. This sometimes caused walk forward parameters to shift, so high volatility then became the norm. These shifted parameters then led to settings that performed poorly in the lower volatility years that were to follow. TM Plus was designed to help this but there are some other proprietary fitnesses in the pipeline to address these issues. Other performance metrics have been added. An important one is Pearson's correlation to a straight line. How close is the equity curve to a straight line, which is the ideal trading system? There's other neat things. Isn't it nice to be able to see the walk forward graph and the final equity graph at the same time? The system shown here was three and a half years out of sample. I wanted to test the enhanced walk forward optimizer with no more data than what was available at the out of sample date. Then apply enhanced walk forward optimizer's new features and fitness functions to see how the last three and a half years out of sample would go. On TradeStation, we would have had to re-optimize the entire data set again, which is many hours of CPU time, and then run the Walk Forward Optimizer. But now, with Enhanced Walk Forward Optimizer, change the date, a few seconds later, click and it's done. The sample system here has got a file that's about one gigabyte long. So in a nutshell, TradeStation took 61 seconds on the first run to walk forward it and WFOE took four seconds. Second time around trade station because it's already got it in RAM was a bit faster it went 21 seconds but enhanced walk forward optimizer took three seconds. A phenomenal difference in speed. Optimization by default chooses the peak fitness. The danger of this is the peak settings are not always the best or the most robust settings. 
You can now test the effect of choosing a non-peak setting, for example, the fifth the best setting. You can see if that will increase the walk forward performance or by how much it will degrade. That gives you a little bit of an idea on how robust it is. It takes a long time to turn a big ship around. Being a big company is both a strength and a weakness. Enhanced Walk Forward Optimizer can easily improve on Walk Forward Optimizer and be years ahead of what is a brilliant but very stale product. Being a full-time system designer and trader, Enhanced Walk Forward Optimizer was something I had to have and it was costly in time and money to build. If it's of interest to you, it can be released for the good of the trading community at a fraction of what it cost me. This will also enable future development of the product. Feel free to request a fully functional demo, but purchase it if you want to contribute to the product getting better. If the tips interest you, please pause the video and go through it line by line. I hope you enjoyed the video and feedback is really welcome. Thanks for listening.